Hi all, welcome to a special Halloween chess edition. So let's have a look topically at a Halloween Gambit game. So as many countries celebrate Halloween, uh, it's actually according to Wiki, it's the eve of the Western Christian feast of the All Hallows Day. So a three day observance of All Hallow Tide, uh, the time in which uh, of the year is dedicated to remembering the dead, including the saints, which are the Hallows, the martyrs, and all the faithful departed. So I have a very, very interesting Halloween gambit game. Let's see, e4, e5, and you play here knight f3, knight c6, and the opponent is unsuspecting after knight c3. Uh, so that you might think this is just a classic four knights position, four knights out, but here white plays a shocker. Knight takes e5. So is this trick or treat for black? Let's have a look here. Black in this game, which by the way is Fried Friedel Harms against Jern Mockel, played in 1998. So this was actually a kind of correspondence game. So black had plenty of time to think about this and actually took on e5, okay, d4. And knight actually went back to c6. So we have d5. These knights have been kicked around. Knight e5, f4, knight g6, e5, knight g8. So what compensation can white possibly have here? d6 is played. This creates a kind of form pawn in the center for black. We have c, d, e, d. So there's an immediate uh, concern here now uh, about using the c7 square as well as, as this potentially dangerous check on e2. There's a few issues. Uh, this check looks very difficult to defend uh, with that pawn there. And also the pawn provides hook on c7 as well. So a very, very dangerous uh, pawn indeed. A knight might jump into b5 to go into c7 or d5, or there's queen e2 as well. So black tries to address all of these things with queen f6, vacating the d8 square for the king. We have knight b5 now been, being chosen, which wants to protect that d6 pawn as well as go into c7. King d8, now bishop e3 is played. And black now, instead of trying to defend that pawn or move it forward, plays knight takes f4, setting a very interesting trap actually. White ignores uh, that pawn on a7 and plays queen d2. If white dead play bishop takes a7 here, then rook takes a7, knight takes, queen e5 check, and this is nasty for white. For example, king d2, queen a5 check, picking up that knight, and black is the one which is going to be laughing here. Uh, so that's very, very uh, dangerous. And instead of king e2, if bishop e2, queen c5 hitting the knight, on knight b5, trying to rescue that knight, knight takes g2 check, and this is pretty nasty. King f1, knight e3 check wins the queen. And uh, even worse would be king d2, there's queen e3 uh, checkmate there. So in this position, after knight takes f4, white wisely plays queen d2. Now we have knight e6, so that knight was hit. And now white does castles queenside, so protecting b2 as well. On bishop takes a7 instead, then black again has rook takes, and queen takes b2 is kind of useful for black. This position, black can live to tell the tale here after recentralizing that queen. So white castled queenside, keeping the pressure up, keeping that form pawn in the center going, keeping the pressure on a7, protecting b2. So we have here queen g6, black's development is highly restricted here, and white gains another tempo, bishop d3, kicking that queen. And now check, queen a5 check, king e8. On b6, white may, may well be tempted for bishop takes b6 check and taking here, and this is very pleasant indeed uh, for white. So look at that c8 pressure. For example, like this, ganging up on c8, will win back uh, material. Bang, rook takes, trying to deflect the queen away from protecting c8. White ends up with a big advantage after all that. So king e8 was played. And we have now another amazing tempo gaining move. Can you guess what was played here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Uh, 
Okay. Bishop f5 hitting that queen. So the queen dare not take here. If the queen took, then knight c7 check liberates the queen attacking f5 here, winning that queen, counterpart queen. So queen takes g2 was played, not daring to take the bishop, of course. But now white plays bishop takes e6, damaging the defense of c7. Uh, f takes, we have knight c7 check, king f7. But white here doesn't go for the rook. White actually is trying for the king. Queen h5 check is played. And black is without any reasonable defense now. Queen g6 is tried. On g6, then there's queen h4. And the dark squares have been weakened further. White has huge pressure here on the f file as well. So bishop g7 check, bishop d4, and that combination of pressure on f6 is too much for black. This crashes through quite comfortably. White's getting a massive advantage there. So if we have a look at this again, instead of bishop g7, if king g7, then just check there. And this crashes through, as you might expect. OK, this is absolutely disastrous for black. So queen g6 was tried. We have rook h f1 check. Sorry, queen e5. Knight f6, not not a h1 check yet. Rook d f1, pinning the knight b6. Rook h g1 hitting the queen, and the queen has nowhere to move here. If the queen goes to h5, well, we just take the queen or rook f6, knight's pinned. So the queen's actually uh, being lost here. Rook b8, rook takes g6, and black resigns. So that was an example of how not to play against the potentially really dangerous Halloween Gambit. Uh, now, if you want to survive the Halloween Gambit, yeah, this variation is not recommended. If you check out Surviving, surviving the Halloween Gambit course, uh, there's a great course by a very strong United States uh, Chess Federation national master, John Chernoff. And he examines uh, this line with great... Uh, Skepticism, yeah, he has much safer routes for black. If you want to check that out on King's Crusher TV slash Halloween, there's a fantastic interactive course to check out there uh, with trainable variations. So uh, check that one out, and I'll show you some other amazing examples of this gambit, uh, and maybe even some games how to defend as well. Okay, thanks very much.